Simon. Um, good morning and um, welcome to this uh, Joint Standards Committee meeting uh, on Thursday, the 3rd of September. Um, particularly welcome to those who are the public who are on the live streaming. My name is Simon Quelch. Um, actually, I'm an employee of the council. I'm the what's called the monitoring officer and I also am a lawyer. Uh, and the only reason that I'm chairing this uh, initial part of the meeting is that there is no chairman or vice chairman appointed. And that is what we are, are going to do now. Um, <clears throat> so in a moment, I will call four nominations for the chairman of this co committee. And that will uh, that will remain until the annual statutory meeting when obviously that matter will be considered again. Uh, members, before we continue, can you please ensure your videos and microphones are turned off? Um, <clears throat> and after we've done that, I will ask Tara to, to carry out a roll call, because I know there may be some substitutes in this meeting, so we can confirm which members are in attendance. But before we do that, can I just mention to all members that this committee meeting is scheduled for approximately two hours. Uh, so it, it's scheduled to last until around about 11.30. Obviously, there's some leeway if matters take a little bit longer than we think. Uh, but there is another committee meeting later on, and committee services also have to prepare for that. Um, uh, and they, it requires quite a bit of time in advance. So if just members could bear that in mind, as well. Uh, so Tara, could you could you kindly carry out the roll call? Well, yes, of course, members, if you could just indicate um, uh, that you're present, please, when I call your name. And um, Councillor Bassinger, I believe he's still trying to get in at the moment. Yeah. Good morning, Tara. I'm oh, here. Good morning, Councillor Thank Thanks. you. Uh, Councillor Helm. Present. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hull. Uh, present. Thank you. I'm here. Councillor Mays. Councillor Mays. I think we might have lost Councillor Mays. Oh no, she is with us. We just can't just can't hear. Uh, Councillor Morley. Present. Thank you. Councillor Nunn. Yes, I'm here, Tara. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Swain. Yes, present. Good morning. Uh, Parish Councillor Stilts. Hello, good morning. I'm present. Good morning. Uh, Mr Hodgson, the independent person. Mr Hodgson, are you there? Yes, I can yes, see. Yes, I'm here. Thank you very yeah. much. <laughs> Um, and could I just ask um, any other members in attendance to in, introduce themselves, just so we've got a record, please. Good morning, it's Chrissy Morris in the house. Councillor Morris. Uh, good morning, Tara. Councillor Wendy Stamps here as well. Much. Good morning, Tara. Morning, Councillor Bamford here. Thank you, Councillor Bamford. Morning, Tara. Councillor Siddle here. Morning, Councillor Siddle. I, I think that's everyone, uh, Mr. Coach. Thank I you. I think there's much. also Councillor Lagan as well. Oh yes, sorry. Thank you. I mean, is there is there any other councillor that's not a part of the committee but that's actually in attendance? Now's your chance to uh, mention that you're in. Okay. I don't. I think that's it, Tara. Yeah. Thank you, Simon. Uh, okay. Okay. So we're in here. Is Adrian Fluker in here? Well, he hasn't. He hasn't. Um, he hasn't said he is. So I assume he isn't. So he's not even got the enough respect to show up at his own uh, joint staff. Councillor Morris, Councillor Morris, let's let's. You're not a part of the committee. So can we just leave that? I've got to go, Councillor Morris. I've got to now go on to uh, the nominations for a chairman. Okay. Thank you. So, could, so could you turn off your? I'd be grateful if you turned off your video feed and your microphone, so we can do that. Seeing as you've asked me so nicely, I shall comply. Thank you very much. 
can I now ask any member wishing to nominate uh, to the position of chairman uh, to unmute your microphone, turn on your video feed and state your name and nomination, please. Councillor Helm. Councillor Helm. OK, Councillor Helm, is that seconded? Yes. Uh, Councillor Bassinger seconds it. OK, so we have a nomination. So we have a nomination for Councillor Helm. Any, any other nominations? Any other nominations? Just one nomination for Councillor Helm. In the absence of any other nominations, then Councillor, do all members assent to that? Do we have an assent? Uh, do we have a general assent to that? Yes. Any yes. 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 Any yeah, disagreement on that? No. No. <laughs> no. 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 Okay. In which case, as I have general assent to that, Councillor Helm, you are chairman of the Joint Standards Committee for the rest of the municipal year. And I now pass over uh, to you for the rest of the meeting, which which will require next the election of a vice chairman. Thank you very much, Simon, and thank you very much, everybody. Um, I now ask for nominations from for vice chairman and from the chair, I'd like to nominate Councillor Nunn. Is that seconded? Yeah, that's seconded. Seconded. All in favour? Yeah, I agree. Um, I haven't been asked. Thank you very much. Sorry, I haven't been asked, have I, Simon? Pardon, Councillor Nunn, did you say something? Yes, sorry, nobody asked whether I would be prepared to stand as vice chair. Okay, would you be prepared to stand then? No. No, okay then. Have we got any other nominations then, please? Um, can I um, nominate Councillor Stamp? Councillor Stamp is here. Who's on the committee, and I'm only substituting for her. But she's not here at the moment. We have to nominate people that are here at the moment. She is here, uh, Mr Chairman. Pardon? Councillor uh, She Mace. is here, Mr Chairman. Am I? Can you repeat what you said? Am I? Sorry, sorry, Mr. Chairman. Um, Councillor Stamper is here at this meeting. Not as a uh, member of the uh, committee, I believe. Is that correct? That, that's correct. But can I actually speak? Because what you're, what you've actually done, new chairman, um, um, the previous chairman, Councillor Bob Boyce did, and put Maddie Thompson in when she wasn't present at the last meeting. So I do air a bit of caution here with the decision you're about to make. Simon Quelch might be able to help you. Simon, can you please help me? Because I'm, I'm trying to nominate someone who's from here. Yeah. And obviously, people don't agree with that. Well, so my, I, I don't think there's anything to prevent, so long as the person is a standing member of the committee, which um, I believe Mrs. Uh, uh, Councillor Stamp is, then uh, there's nothing to prevent someone nominating Councillor Stamp in her absence, even though she's not a part of the committee today. Thank you very much for clearing that, Simon. Apologies to Councillor Stamp. Uh, someone has nominated Councillor Stamp. Have we got a seconder, please? Seconded, Councillor uh, Seconded, Councillor Bassinger. Thank you Right, we move on now. The chairman. Well, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes. Well, Mr. Chairman, Peter Stilt speaking. Um, would it be best if when uh, Councillor Stamp is present, she wishes to agree to it? You know it's belt and braces. OK. Can, can Councillor Stamp agree to that then? I mean, when she, when she is present, she then agrees to do it. OK, then. So we can move on now, OK? Yeah, thanks. Quite happy with that. Right, OK. Um, I welcome everyone. And then the following agenda requirements before moving on to procedure two below. The investigator or monitor officer, if the investigator is absent, invited to summarise the conclusion of the report and to make any clarifying remarks. Um, Chairman, can I just interrupt? We've yes. gone a bit, sorry. Um, there's just a few bits on the Chairman's notices that need to be gone through, and then we've got apologies for absence. Oh, um, hang on a minute. I'm going to get the right bit then. I've, I've read now the scripts and... Uh, 
I'm totally unprepared for this, as you you realise, because it's been thrust on me, and uh, I'm trying to find the chairman's notices now. None there. Got to go on to something else now. I've got no script for that, Tara, so I shall... Uh, Chairman, do you want me to send it through an email again quickly? Uh, I'll be in a muddle because I've got to switch this off to go on to that and come back on again. So, um, uh, normally we do apologies for absence, don't we? Yes, Chairman. Any apologies for absence? We've... Um, yes, Chairman. Um, would, you, would it be helpful if I just perhaps refer to the few bits on the notices that were there? Yes, please. Um, so, the... Uh, the first one is just to remind members um, that ensure microphones remain muted and the video feeds off when you're not addressing the committee. Um, the meeting's being hosted remotely, streamed live and recorded, and by being present, you're giving your consent to being recorded. Um, members and officers during each item, please use the chat function uh, to indicate if you wish to speak. Uh, the chairman will then invite you at the appropriate time. Um, members are reminded that apart from indicating you wish to speak or that you uh, have to leave the meeting, the chat function should not be used for any other purpose. Um, please do not use the raised hand function as this is, un uh, this is un unavailable on all devices. Um, when speaking and referring to agenda papers, if possible, please can you um, ensure you reference a page number or paragraph number. Uh, and members are asked if they need to leave the meeting at any point that they make it known and use the check function to signify that they need to leave the meeting. Um, ben Chairman, um, officers are asked to introduce themselves, um, if that would be helpful for you. Thank you. Could officers introduce themselves, please? Yes, I've, I've, I'm obviously here as an officer, but I've already introduced myself, Simon Quelch. I'm the monitoring officer. Thank you. And uh, the um, investigator. Thank you, Councillor Helm. My name's Alex Orham. Um, I'm a director of Chai Associates and I'm the independent investigator who was instructed to carry out um, the investigation into Councillor Sills' com complaint. OK, thank you very much. Is anyone else present? Uh, I believe that is everybody, Chairman. Okay. So, um, if you're happy, can I move on to apologies for absence? Yes, you can, mate. Thank you very much for doing that because I don't appear to have any script in my paperwork here at all. Okay. Just the general paperwork I've got. I was totally unprepared for this. <laughs> Thank you, Tara. That's okay. Um, so, Chairman, apologies have been received from uh, Councillor Mrs Channer, Councillor Jarvis, Councillor Stump, Councillor Mrs Thompson, um, and in accordance with notice given, Councillor Hull is attending as a substitute for Councillor Mrs Channer, Councillor Swain as a substitute for Councillor um, Stamp, and Councillor Morley as a substitute for Councillor Mrs Thompson. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do I now go on procedure for complaints determination? Uh, no, Chairman, sorry. It's next item on the agenda is minutes of the last meeting. Uh, minutes of the last meeting, please. Pages? Five to ten, Chairman. Five to ten. Do you agree this is a true and accurate record? Can I propose a please? Agreed. Yes, I propose. Agreed. 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 Sorry, can I jump in? Yes, you sorry, may. Can I can I just jump in and say that um, I was actually in attendance, though it isn't recorded. I am mentioned in the body, but I, I was in attendance at that meeting. And I, the independent person is a member of the committee. OK. Tara, can you um, amend that minutes to say that, please? Yes, of course, Chairman. We can make that amendment. No problem at all. OK. Now, uh, where do we go from here, Tara? Sorry to be a nuisance. Disclosure of interest, Chairman. Disclosure of interest, please. Anyone got any interest they wish to disclose? And nobody has indicated, Chairman. And if you have an interest during the meeting, will you please disclose it as soon as possible? Thank you. 
<laughs> right, what's the next? Sorry. <laughs> So, Chairman, the next item um, is uh, Agenda Item 7, uh, which is the standards complaint um, in relation to Councillor Adrian Fluker. Um, it's found on pages 11 to 54 of the pack. Um, and the first item is, is for Mr Quelch to present that report. Thank you. Mr Quelch, please. Uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes. Um, I really don't have anything to say other than that I was the person that instructed um, Mr Oram as the independent investigator and obviously from there on he took charge of the matter in terms of interviewing, uh, assessing the evidence and then writing the report that you have in your pack. Um, his conclusion is clear uh, and really I now pass over to, to Mr Oram so that uh, if so that if maybe he would like just to comment on his report and confirm the conclusion that he's reached, Chairman. Okay. Is there any with that? If, yeah, that's fine. If you could do that, please uh, carry on. Um, Chairman, uh, just, just to interrupt, Councillor Nunn has a question for Mr yeah, Quirk. Councillor Nunn. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Chairman. Uh, Mr Quelch, um, just before we move on to the report, uh, looking at your covering two pages, that's page 11 and page 12. Um, I've asked this sort of question before, but I'd like some clarification for all present, please. Of the list of sanctions that you've listed here, um, can you just clarify how many of those this committee is actually empowered to uh, impose as opposed to recommend and would be subject to full council approval? Right, OK. Now, um, if we go to obviously number one on my report at page 12 in paragraph 3.3, .3, I think that's what you're referring to, Councillor Nunn. Uh, number one, obviously, uh, in a sense, is already is going to happen naturally because com committee minutes go to council for noting. Um, number two, now there's two aspects to this. I've only put in the formal one. JSC itself can impose a censure according to the Constitution, uh, but that wouldn't be what's called a formal censure. It has in the past issued its own censures and that is within the Constitution. I haven't put that in there. Um, and I'm glad you've asked the question because within two is the power for JSC to issue a censure. Now, by recommending to council, that is a sense is a, a level up because it then would require the vote of all members in council itself to issue a formal censure. And rather than that being signed by the chairman of the standards committee, as we have in the past done, um, quite uh, as a sort of informal resolution, uh, this would then be signed by the chairman of the council. So within, within number two, there is a power for JSC to issue its own censure. There is a greater power to recommend one to council. Okay, um, sorry, four and five. Number three, that is number three, instructing the monitoring officer to arrange training for the member. Uh, that is a power vested in JSC. And four and five. Number four, again, recommend to council. Again, that's the wording of the constitution. And um, again, that goes to full council. If you want to withdraw facilities, uh, and I I've given an example there, it could also include non-use of the office other than for meet uh, formal council meetings. That will be a recommendation to council. And then five, obviously, uh, removal from an official position from committee or from any working group again requires council a council decision. And oh, that's the majority of the full council. Yeah, uh, yeah, that would be my by majority vote. Yes. Thank you. That's my first so question. The only, so the only thing not covered in my report is the power to censure, which does exist for JSC. Thank you. That's my first question. My second question relates to item five of page 12, which is the list of implications. I was surprised that um, it reads none, uh, bearing in mind the content of the report. 
report, which uh, we've all read, I'm sure, uh, because um, uh, in the report of 1.3 and 5.26, it does seem to indicate that there are implications for our customers. And in the report of 1.2, it does seem to indicate that there are implications in terms of the qualities. Well, to our chairman, um, it wouldn't be for me, <laughs> for me to put in a report on an undetermined adjudication, what are the implications? Because you may decide there is no breach. I, I, I am therefore presupposing if I put something in on that particular point about implications for customers, uh, that, that, that there has been a breach. So I can see, I, th I hope you can see my position there in writing the report. The, well, the second point on resources is this is the implications for the council following on from um, the report, which, yes, obviously there was a fee for Mr. Oram, of course there was, um, but this is now following on from that. So what are the implications of the recommendation that I put in my report, those three recommendations, that that's what we're dealing with? Well, I'm happy to move on, but I would have thought, Mr. Quelch, that you would have listed potential implications uh, under five, but uh, no, no matter, uh, happy to move on. OK, now, uh, the investigator was going to go through his report, I believe. Hello. Hi, thank you, Councillor Helm. Um, it's not uh, it's not my intention to, uh, to to read you through the report. I'm I'm making an assumption that all members have had the opportunity to uh, look through the content um, and, and take everything on board. I'm happy to answer any questions that, that members may have, but um, I, I will just briefly summarise. Um, my conclusions, if that's agreeable. That's fine. Obviously, we were instructed to investigate a complaint that was made uh, by Councillor Siddle and which members will find on page 43 of their agenda bundle. Councillor Siddle's complaint related to um, alleged conduct by Councillor Fluker over a significant period of time, um, in fact, a period of time exceeding Councillor Siddle's own um, time as a councillor and he set out a chronology um, in his complaint of, of various uh, occasions where he has been concerned about the way he's been treated by Councillor Fluker. Now the um, obviously the investigation to try to uh, focus on establishing um, the facts in relation to those incidents. Um, given Councillor Fluker's uh, decision not to engage with the investigation. Uh, it was difficult to know which, if any, of the alleged uh, incidents were in dispute, um, which is normally the starting point of any investigation. Um, we uh, decided, um, though, despite not having any, um, obviously, any contrary view to the complaint, we decided to interview a number of uh, councillors uh, about the alleged incidents, councillors that we were informed were witnessed some of the alleged conduct and uh, they're listed on page 21 of the agenda bundle um, uh, under the subheading the investigation yes, now got... obviously the next section of the report deals with um, our investigation and the findings of, of that investigation um, i'm gonna assume as I said that members had an opportunity to to read through that and I won't dwell on that at all. Obviously once um, the investigation has established the facts uh, as satisfied um, by those we interviewed, uh, we had to make some considerations about whether the code of conduct had been breached. Now the, the first point of call on that is deciding whether actually the alleged conduct comes within the jurisdiction of the localism act. Uh, members will be aware that um, councillors are not um, obliged to comply with the code of conduct at all times. They're only obliged to comply with the code. The code can only be 
apply to their conduct when they're conducting council business. I've given some more general thoughts on that in Annex B of the report, um, but page 35 and 36 deals specifically with my thoughts in relation to Councillor Fluker's conduct. And members will see that um, whilst I'm satisfied that Councillor Fluker's conduct when um, he attended council meetings and when he engaged with council officers does fall within the jurisdiction of the code, I, I did not believe that his uh, conduct at conservative group meetings and prior to that um, during the selection process that Councillor Siddle went through to become a councillor, um, I did not believe that they did fall within the jurisdiction. Members, of course, are welcome to take their own view. Um, my reasoning, hopefully, is clearly set out in the report, and I'm happy to take questions. Turning then to the conduct that, um, that did occur, the, the code deals with fairly nebulous terms like treating others with respect um, without necessarily defining it. And I felt it was important for me to define what I felt is meant by those paragraphs of the code before deciding whether the conduct um, breached those aspects. And so members will see on page 37 um, and 38 of the agenda pack that I've set out my own thoughts on the code principles and, and given some further detail and been a little bit more prescriptive on, on what I believe they represent. Now, I'm aware that all local authorities have their own culture. And again, it's in, in part the Standards Committee's role and responsibility to decide what culture they want within their own organisation. Um, but just to be clear to members, my own thoughts and my own reasoning as to whether the code has been breached is, is predicated on the the principles that I've set out on those pages in paragraphs 5.10, 5.11 and 5.12. And again, I'm happy to take questions from any members about that. Moving on then to applying councillors Fluker's conduct to those principles. I've set out um, in from paragraph 5.13 onwards um, my thoughts about uh, councillor Fluker's conduct. And I've highlighted at paragraph 5.17, um, where I believe Councillor Fluker's conduct um, did represent a failure to comply with the code. I understand that some of these um, incidents have been discussed by the Standards Committee before in relation to other complaints that were raised. And whilst I haven't um, looked in any detail at the investigation that was carried out in that regard, Councillor Fluker's comments to members um, at that committee meeting did give me an opportunity to consider um, his point of view. And I've gone on in the report to set out why I think, despite Councillor Fluker's um, descriptions of his own conduct or his own intentions, why they still amount to a failure to comply with the code. Um, and I hope that has been clearly set out in a way that members can understand. But again, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions. Thank right. you, Ken. Sorry, members, any questions, please? Yes, yes. Chairman, yes. Mayor, Chairman Councillor Nunn, Councillor Mays and Councillor Swain have asked to speak. Thank you very much. Councillor Nunn, then Councillor Swain and then Councillor whatever it was. I can't remember. Thank you. Um, yes, thank you, Mr. Oren, um, for your excellent report and for your presentation. Uh, probably a bit of an unfair point to start off with, Mr. Oran, but I'll ask it nevertheless. Um, your report didn't cost £50,000, did it? No, it, it did not. Thank you very much. Uh, only it's been widely reported that this uh, investigation has amounted to £50,000. So thank you for clarifying that. I, I mean, I, I, have, I haven't yet um, sent an invoice um, to uh, the authority. That obviously our, the time will be concluded once this this hearing has finished um yes. but I, I can i can assure members that it um it won't get um anywhere near um even five figures so Lovely. that's very kind of you to clarify that thank you very much turning to your report then can we go to paragraph 4.3 please 
that's on page um, 21. In the um, uh, third paragraph, we also interviewed another member of the council. Are you with me? Yes. Thank you. Um, is anonymity appropriate in such an investigation, bearing in mind that we are publicly elected representatives and in the spirit of openness as elected representatives, is anonymity acceptable? Anonymity can be acceptable, councillor, um, depending on, um, no, I mean, the Localism Act doesn't compel or can't compel anybody to give evidence, uh, including the member under investigation. Um, it is hoped that um, councillors um, who are signed up to the code will um, do all they can to ensure that its application um, is um, as transparent and open as possible. Um, but there are many occasions where there might be sensitivities involved or concerns where where um, those involved in an investigation uh, don't wish their identity to be known. Now, my preference is not to rely on evidence provided by those who do not wish to have their um, identity known. Uh, we were Obviously, we approached a number of councillors about being involved in this, and uh, we interviewed a number, and it was decided, having obtained the evidence from the various councillors, that, in fact, there would be no need to rely on any of the evidence provided by the witness who wanted to remain anonymous, and therefore, we haven't included any of their evidence or relied on it in the report. Okay, thank you very much for clearing that up. Uh, in the same paragraph, uh, Mr. Oran, uh, 4.3, uh, the, the last paragraph on page 21, um, uh, is it usual in your experience for a councillor to not cooperate in an investigation? It, it's not usual, no. Um, I've conducted probably, well, in excess of 300 standards investigations. Um, and I would say that um, a member who is under investigation, not cooperating, um, we're looking at probably 10 or 11 cases um, over that period. And uh, have those other cases involved a leader? Um, off the top of my head, um, possibly one, but, but I'm, I'm not certain. And uh, is the failure to cooperate in itself a breach of the code of conduct? Well, I mean that will be for that will be for members to decide themselves. Um, it's um, in, in in a sense, uh, members may feel they're limited to only being able to breach the councillor on conduct that's been alleged and referred for investigation. Um, however, I have given my own thoughts. Um, if you'll just bear with me for a second. <coughs> During my considerations as to whether Councillor Fluker has brought his office or authority into disrepute, which can be found on page um, 41 of the agenda pack. And you will see um, in the second half of paragraph 5.27, I've, I've acknowledged that while it's Councillor Fluke, Fluker's prerogative not to involve himself, that I have been disappointed by it and pointed out that the current standards framework does rely on the cooperation of councillors and their commitment to upholding the code and its associated procedures. And that one would might expect the leader in particular to try and set an example in that regard. Thank you, Mr. Laura. Uh, sorry to keep quizzing you, but nearly there, just two left to go. Uh, 4.4.2, uh, but turning to the section on page 30 in italics, uh, part of your investigation there, um, there's a reference towards the end of the first paragraph on page 30, um, that, uh, and it's a strong, strong word this, that Council Luca lied to the monitoring officer. 
Yes, well, that was that was that was evidence. Can you clarify for us what that what that's really talking about? Well, that was evidence given to us by Councillor Jarvis. So that isn't that isn't a finding of our investigation or a conclusion that has been made. That was an account given to us by Councillor Jarvis. Now, Councillor Fluker allegedly lying to the monitoring officer was not something that was referred to us for investigation. And so we did no further investigation into that or made any conclusions or findings of fact on it. Um, it is simply included as part of Councillor Jarvis's evidence in relation to the matter that we were investigating, which <coughs> for that particular paragraph, I believe refers to the throat slit and gesture. OK, thank you. And my thank you very much, Mr. Laura. And uh, my final question uh, at this stage is on page 31 at 4.4.5. Now, I hope you can help me with this because I'm struggling with this a bit. This issue about um, saying hello, sailor, which in itself is a rather dated, uh, isn't it? But anyway, hello, sailor. Um, is being uh, interpreted in two ways. First of all, it's being interpreted um, as, um, uh, as goading uh, in terms of uh, sexuality. Uh, and secondly, it's being interpreted as um, a friendly uh, greeting because of um, yachting, uh, because of a mutually interested yachting. Now, what I'm struggling with here is the inclusion uh, that, that is had in the report 4.4.5 that um, Councillor Durham, uh, that Councillor Fluke confessed that he had deliberately made the Hello Sailor comment to Councillor Siddle in order to wind him up? Yes. Why would um, a mutual interest in yachting uh, actually um, equate to winding somebody up by calling them Hello, by saying Hello Sailor? Do you, you, you're saying what? Sorry, sorry, Councillor. And you're, you're saying, do, do I believe he was trying to wind Councillor Siddle up? Well, I'm trying to work out if, with those two interpretations. If, 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 for example, we follow the logic that um, it was a greeting between two yachtsmen, why would Councillor Durham? You might not be able to answer mm. to Councillor Durham, but why would Councillor Durham be saying? It was said in order to wind him up if it was a mutual um, a greeting by sailors. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, as, as, as you say, that might be a better question put to Councillor Durham. I, my own thoughts were that um, it wasn't intended as a normal greeting between two um, yachtsmen, um, but that it was um, a deliberate um, attempt to um, mock Councillor Siddle, my, I, I mean, I would, I would, I would point you to paragraphs five point two two and five point two three of my report, which are on page forty of the bundle. Yes. Yeah. There, there, you will see that um, based on the evidence that we received, in particular, relating to Councillor Fluker's tone, the tone and manner in which he made the comment. Um, we felt that um, the evidence suggested that he had adopted a camp manner and, and therefore that um, the comment was more likely to be um, uh, made in a sort of mocking manner. And in 5.23, a lot of the members we spoke to did suggest that um, they thought it probably had been done in that way, but that it hadn't been vindictive. It had been effectively a joke or banter. Um, and we've set out in, in that paragraph um, why we think that that, even if that were the case, and obviously we didn't get an opportunity to ask Councillor Fluker, but even if that were the case, we would still consider it a breach of the Code of Conduct. OK, thank you very much, Mr. Warren. I'm sorry to have taken up so much of your time. No, no problem at all. Very helpful, thank you. That's all right, Councillor Nunn. Next one, please, Tara. Um, Chairman, that was Councillor Mays who asked to speak next. Thank you. Councillor Mays, please. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman, for this opportunity. 
Um, I'd like to thank uh, Mr Oram and CHNI Associates for a very thorough report, the same as Councillor Nunn. Um, you've just been um, speaking about um, the paragraph uh, about the Hello Sailor, which was on page 40, uh, 51. Sorry, page 40. Um, I am uh, intrigued as to why that this has not been engaged with at all in your recommendations um, as this is, um, uh, hold on a moment, I'm just referring to my notes, um, that you've not re referred to it at all in relation to uh, Councillor Fuqua's actions in his capacity um, and, and the evidence is very strongly homophobic. Why has this not been included as a recommendation as a breach? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry if it wasn't clear. Um, it has been included. We've, we've concluded that um, that Councillor Fluker both failed to show, treat Councillor Siddle with respect and that he bullied him. And um, 5.17 sets out the specific occasions on which we believe this is evident. And the third bullet point of that states, refers to the fact that Councillor Siddle, Siddle when talking to Councillor Siddle in a deliberately affected and camp manner at the September Council meeting, um, both in relation to his attire and with the comment, hello, sailor. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr. Oram. However, in our general obligations under our rules of conduct, um, 3.5a um, is you must not do anything that may cause the authority to breach any of the equality enactments. Um, is not um, breach of the Equality Act 2010 for the homophobic remarks that were made within the chamber um, not not applicable in this particular case? Um, no, I'm not quite no, sure it, why that has not been applied. It, it wouldn't, and I'm, I'm I'm happy to send more information about that outside of the meeting. I have, uh, you know, uh, reasoning with regards what would be required for a member to lead the authority to breach its equality obligations. Um, that wasn't part of my considerations, and so I haven't included it in the report. Apologies for that. But this that, that, that section of the code um, would more likely relate to decisions that are being made that would then lead to actions by the authority that would yeah. be breach of the Equalities Act, rather than the individual comments or conduct of a councillor outside of decision making. Does that does that make sense? I, yeah. I can, even, even, though this is a protect, even though this is a protected character, characteristic. It, even though it's a protected characteristic, yes. It, it's okay. it, it's more about um it's it's more about uh you know the way the authority treats its uh its constituents as it were and, and councillors' decisions in relation to that, the application of policies and procedures. So you've actually dealt with this under the the, the bullying element. Um, I have, yes, yes. I, I, I didn't, I didn't think it engaged the uh, the equalities legislation. Again, I can, I mean, if I can go into more more detail on that, if you give me a couple of Thank minutes, you. where I can provide it with you. Would Would you like me to do that? That would be helpful. Thank you very much. Okay, give me one second. I'm just going to get off my colleague. One second. Okay. okay. Chairman, I don't know if it would be helpful, but Councillor Morley's got a question for, Count, for Mr. Quelch. I don't know right. if you can deal with that while we're waiting for Mr. Oram yeah. to get his information. Councillor Morley. Uh, yes, yes. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Mr. I, I just wondered um, really why more councillors. Uh, or oh, sorry, why their views weren't taken really with um, if they were anonymous, it was all. Is that really a, um, a thing that's really done in, in procedures like that? And and also, um, it says here in 4.39 of page 28, uh, how was it really um, decided if it was intended 
um, to be expensive or not, really. I can't under... I mean, a, a clumsy remark it, it either is offensive or it isn't. You know, I'm just trying to get a touch of my cat's phone. Thank you. I, I, sorry, Chairman, did you want me to answer that? Yes, please. Y yes. Um, I think uh, Mr. Mr. Oram has already sort of answered that uh, question in relation to anonymity. Um, it, it, there's nothing in the Localism yeah. Act that requires people to actually cooperate. And therefore, that means that sometimes a, a, a councillor may say, um, I want to, if yeah. they're a witness, that is not the subject member. Um, because obviously all councillors, whether they're the subject member or a witness, should cooperate really with any investigation. But if they have a particular reason for wanting to give evidence, but to do so anonymously, then that can be done. It's really in the discretion of the investigation, investigating officer or the monitoring officer. And then the, the committee, whether they're prepared to accept any anything that that the investigator relies on that's said by someone anonymous. It's not ideal because obviously you want you want to know who yeah. said what, but there's nothing prescriptive in the legislation or in the code that speaks about anonymity. It's one of those things that you just have to deal with as and when it occurs. Um, yeah. On the issue of 4.39, I think you're probably better, as it's Mr. Oram's um, yeah. Report, he's probably better answering that than me. Okay. Yeah. If, sorry about that. Yeah. If 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 I could, if I, I, is he available at the moment? Or yes, is he's he right in front of us. Was was yeah. that just a question about how we yeah. chose which one? Yeah. How do you come up? I mean, a clumsy remark or offensive. Uh, I mean, really, it was obviously. You know, I don't know how you can sort of. Uh, Clumsy remark, really. I must have known what he was saying, to be fair. Uh, I, I don't know how you came up with a clumsy remark, that was all, really, when it was obviously deemed to be offensive, I would have thought. Uh, sorry, but, Councillor Morley. Sorry, could I just clarify? Are you asking about how we came to interview the councillors that we did? Or, uh, uh, no, I've moved, so I've moved sorry, on. I'm on uh, 4.39 now. Uh, page 28, um, I believe this to have been a very clumsy remark. Uh, I mean, it was either meant or it wasn't really. I mean, you, you can't really distinguish the two, I would have thought. What, what's your view on that, please? Um, the, the remark about Hello Sailor? Yes, and, and it was deemed to be a clumsy remark. Uh, that, that was all. Uh, it's, to, to my mind, it was obviously meant um, I, I wonder, yes. you know, I mean, again, the 5.39 is Councillor Jarvis's own personal view right. of, of how he interpreted the remark. Okay. Um, uh, hopefully, my own thoughts in relation to the mark, remark have been made clear in section five of the report. Yeah. Um, what, what we do is we, we you know, we the, the first point of call in terms of the witnesses is to try and give us an account of what happened. And yes. We look at all those accounts to see if we can uh, reach a conclusion as to as to what did happen. But obviously, right. witnesses may have their own opinions about whether, you know, the, the, not only on objectively what they saw, but the the tone, manner, the yeah. uh, intention. Um, and Councillor Jarvis has given us that. Um, okay. But we've we've obviously set out our own thoughts later on. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Will you finish next one, please? Well, if I can go back to the equalities legislation, yes. um, um, and I can I can send this to uh, to Simon to circulate afterwards. But we do have some general considerations around a local authority's public sector duty and um, what um, what those duties are, obviously in relation to direct discrimination, indirect discrimination victimisation and harassment. Um, now, in, for, for a member to cause their authority to be in breach of those laws, um, it normally applies where a member themselves acts in a discriminatory manner um, against one of the protected 
characteristics um, and as such causes their authority to to breach those enactments now members may consider that um, councillor fluka um, by victimizing um, councillor siddle um, or, or um, harassing him um, did lead the actual the entire authority to breach the enactment and and, and reach a conclusion on that um, but obviously I've, I've limited my considerations to those aspects of the code included in the report anybody else please um, yes yes chairman councillor swain wanted to speak councillor swain uh, thank you, yes, um, one or two questions for Mr. Horam, um, and, and it probably has a bearing on what has just been said. I, I, um, I had a little bit of difficulty with interpreting the second sentence of 311, um, that is about um, um, really qualifications to the validity or the um, relevance of the Human um, Rights Act. Um, uh, perhaps you can tell me, I, I interpret that as meaning that um, the freedoms of expression and freedom of speech are um, limited to the extent that we have legislation such as that on harassment and discrimination and so on. Um, uh, perhaps uh, um, Mr. Holm could confirm whether that have I interpreted that correctly? Uh, absolutely, Councillor Swain. Um, we, we have obviously legislation in relation to discrimination and harassment and when members become or agree to become councillors, then obviously the legislation in this country um, requires them to sign up to a code of conduct, which again um, will impact on their um, freedom of speech rights. I've Point set out. Order. Point of order, please. Councillor Morris, you're not on this. Uh, Point of Would order. Be quiet. Would you please keep Point quiet? Point of order. Uh, can I call on all committee members to vote on whether we hear Councillor Morris or not, please? Is that seconded? Great. Point Councillor of order. Vote on that, you please? are giving out incorrect information. Councillor Morris, will you please keep quiet? Can we take a vote on whether point Councillor Morris... Point of order. Uh, you take my point of order. Can we take a, a vote, please? Point of order was before the vote. Right. Yes, but you're not it's in the committee order. meeting. You're not, Simon, can you assist, please? Is he allowed to speak in a committee meeting when he's not a member of this committee? Uh, no, Councillor Morris is not a member of the Standards Committee, and it's only committee members that can make a point of order. Um, any, any other councillor that wishes to speak has to do so normally with prior agreement with the chairman. Uh, chairman obviously has, obviously has discretion, but... As of right, to make a point of order uh, statement, you have to be a committee member. And and council has not put Councillor Morris onto this committee. So you are happy for a uh, a mistake to be made, even though I'm trying to point that out before it continues. Sorry, Councillor Morris. I have a proposal proposed by me, seconded by Councillor Morley. Stitcher. All in favour of cutting Councillor out of the meeting, please. Can I take a roll call, please? Chairman, you want me to take a roll call for you? Yes, please. Um, members, if you could just indicate if you're for or against um, when your name's called, please. Uh, Councillor Bassinger. For. Uh, Councillor Helm. For. Councillor Hull. For. Councillor Mays. Against. Thank you, Carly. Councillor Morley. For. Councillor Nunn. For. Councillor Swain. For. That's six four one against, Chairman. That motion is duly carried. Can you please cut out Councillor Morley? Corrupt. Please. Corrupt. You are corrupt. Uh, for members of the public, this meeting is not corrupt. I'm afraid Councillor Morris keeps on interrupting meetings and we can't get on with the business in hand. So we're now returned to the business at hand. I think, uh, was there any more questions from anybody? Um, just, to, yes, just, to conclude on that, just to conclude on that point, I was just going to say to members 
that um, despite the legislation and obviously despite the code of conduct, it is vitally important that members do feel they have freedom of expression and freedom of speech. And any decision that the code has been breached will automatically restrict those rights. And so it's important that members do consider um, whether it's a legitimate restriction on Councillor Fluker's freedom of speech rights. Now, I set out in paragraph 3.12 um, some, uh, some uh, propositions that were derived in the, uh, by Mr Justice Hickenbottom in Heaston versus the Public Service Ombudsman. Now, obviously relevant to this is the fact that Councillor Siddle is a politician and therefore required to have a thick skin required to um, put up to a certain extent with the cut and thrust of local politics. Um, my own view, obviously, as set out in the reasoning, however, is that this is a legitimate restriction on Councillor Fluker's freedom of speech rights by finding him in breach of the code. Can I then just, uh, would it be right that you've um, reported really in relation to breaches of the code of conduct, not in relation to any breaches of the law? Absolutely. Right. Uh, it seems to me that the Human Rights Act is engaged, but um, only in limited areas um, concerning the passing of confidential information, for instance. Um, and this question of predetermination of voting um, in the Conservative group before a meeting, um, which restricted the rights. In fact, what councillors Siddle and Fleming were doing was exercising their right of freedom of uh, expression and freedom of speech by voting as they thought fit at the meeting rather than by some predetermined voting arrangement. None of these matters were relevant to my investigation. This is, uh, I don't know if this is being dealt with at a different meeting, but this is not what's under consideration at this meeting. Okay, lastly, can I ask what the meaning is in, um, on page, uh, no, about the the decision of the 30th of January meeting that it was non-precedent. What does that mean? It, it just means that, um, that, that, that my considerations and conclusions are not bound by the decision members made at that meeting. Obviously, members considered um, two of the uh, incidents that I have considered in my report, um, the hello sailor comment and the throat cutting gesture. And um, whilst I haven't looked at members' considerations in great detail, I understand that they decided that the code of conduct had not been breached in relation to those two um, incidents. Uh, all I was pointing out is that I am not bound by that decision. I can make my own considerations based on the facts as I found them in my investigation. And similarly, um, members here, you know, should be aware that they're today deciding whether Councillor Fluker has treated Councillor Siddle with um, disrespectfully and whether they've he's bullied and harassed him over a significant period of time um, and that obviously they will to make that decision you need evidence of incidents where this has occurred these are those two of those incidents um, you're not deciding today whether individually they represent a breach of the code but what you're deciding is whether a a a a, a cumulatively uh, a number of incidents have occurred whereby in, in the round, Councillor Fluker's conduct can be considered bullying and harassing towards Councillor Siddle. Right, thank you. Anybody else? Um, yes, Norman Hodgson, can yes. I jump in? Yeah, Norman, yeah, carry on. Um, sorry, the, the chat room, it seems to be um, um, disconnected for me, so I'll, I'll, I'll have uh, the sort of same jump problem, in. I'm afraid. All oh, right, OK. Um, and also, before I start, let me just say, um, Councillor Siddle is one of my district councillors. Um, I had, I did advise Simon of this, I, though I don't know Councillor Siddle personally. He is, um, he is obviously local to me in that respect. Um, Thank I've you, got Norman. just a couple. Of, yes. Um, can I just get, seek clarification? Um, can, Councillor Fluker obviously didn't respond to the investigation. As I understand it, that in itself is a breach of the Morden's Code of Conduct. Is that correct? Simon? Uh, the actual, I think you're referring, um, 
you're referring to, let me just find the code itself. There is a provision in our code that says that you have to, yes, you have to comply with the, let me just get the wording of it. Um, yes, you need to comply with the instructions of the monitoring officer. Um, and, and it's a breach not in relation to any investigation. Yes, you must comply with any request of the authority's monitoring officer or Section 15 officer in connection with an investigation conducted in accordance with their respective statutory powers. Now, that's wider than just the Localism Act. That's any powers that they have under the Local Government Act as well. But I think it particularly has in mind the Localism Act. Now, um, uh, that is a breach, but um, it has to be, to me, a clear request of the monitoring officer. I don't think it follows that it, it, it in itself is the investigating officer, although the investigating officer is working under the instruction of the monitoring officer. I think there would need to be a clear instruction from the monitoring officer or the Section 151 officer. You must cooperate with the investigator for that to be a clear breach, in my view. OK, thank you. Um, second question, uh, Mr. Oram, thank you. Um, there's quite a bit of reference, um, I think, information provided by Councillor Siddle, um, some of it prior to him becoming a councillor, um, some of it when within the Conservative group. Um, now, I think in your report you, you do point that out, so it, it isn't taken into account in your um, findings. Um, can I ask, in, the, um, in your investigation, did Councillor Siddle advised that he had made a separate, separate complaint to his association about the behaviour of Councillor Fluker within the um, within the um, the group meeting. I believe he did. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, thank you. That's that's all my questions. Thank you. Right. Is there anybody else? Chairman, Councillor Bassinger uh, and Councillor Stilts. Councillor Bassinger. Well, Councillor Howell. Councillor Howell. Thank you, uh, Mr. Oram. I just, I just wonder if you could clarify that um, in, in regard to the, in, uh, getting um, Councillor Fuka to engage, was, were all the steps taken to give him every opportunity to engage with this investigation? He, he was sent a number of emails ask, asking if he could contact us and messages were left on his telephone asking him to contact us. And as, as we've just heard, I, I believe that um, uh, he would have had to respond if he was given a direct instruction from the monitoring officer. Is that correct? Um, well, the, the um, I mean, the, the, the aspect of the code I understand um, relates to um, uh, it, it being a potential breach of the code. If, if he doesn't um, respond to a direct instruction from monitoring officer. But I would repeat, I, I, I'd quickly add as well that Councillor Fluker was sent a copy of the draft report with our provisional findings and invited to provide any comments he wanted, to dispute any aspects of it that he wished. And again, he chose not to respond to that. Uh, in, in relation to your last um, question, obviously members may, may consider um, that his non-cooperation amounts to a breach of the code but I, I would simply repeat that under the localism act neither the monitoring officer nor i or anyone has any powers to compel any party to engage with the process and it is his prerogative not to if he if he wishes so could i just ask again did you at any time instruct the monitoring officer to instruct councillor fluker to engage with the with the investigation uh, no, because I, I don't believe the monitoring officer has any powers beyond those that I have to to get Councillor Fluker's um, involvement or engagement um, with the process. Uh, the monitoring officer was, though, aware that Councillor Fluker was not engaging with the process. But you you are you're, you're happy that every opportunity was given to Councillor Fluker to engage with this investigation. Absolutely. Um, uh, you know it, there were. There were, there were efforts made to contact him, um, uh, made on, on a numerous occasion. Um, and we, 
we you know we were we were at no time led to believe that he wasn't aware of our efforts to to contact right. thank you very much next one please uh, councillor stilts chairman councillor stilts all right, good morning, Mr. Chairman. Um, we were saying about Article 10 of the uh, uh, Human Rights Act. Well, it does say protect your right to hold your own opinions and express them freely. Uh, it then goes on to say, although you have freedom of expression, you also, you also have a duty to behave responsibility and to respect other people's rights. Now, on the MDC Code of Conduct, um, number three, rules of conduct, 3.2, you must treat others uh, with respect, 3.3 uphold the law, and 3.5 um, point E conduct yourself in a manner so which could responsibly be re regarded as bringing your office uh, on the authority into disrepute. So I'd just like to bring those ones up because I think uh, um, the Code of Conduct uh, <clears throat> does tell the, uh, the Code of all councillors of any parish or town or district. Um, They've got to be uh, reasonable and they've got to treat other people with respect. Um, and then, as I say to the other one on the human right, um, they must respect other people and their, their rights uh, to behave responsibility and respect other people's rights. That's my only question. Is this one, because earlier you were saying that part of that doesn't cover uh, the councillors, but only the action of the council? So got no, no, the... the the, the, the code um, aspects of the paragraphs of the code you referred to are exactly the paragraphs of the code that I've found Councillor Fuka to have failed to comply with. Um, the code of conduct absolutely isn't um, intended to restrict um, political debate and it's not intended to stop councillors being passionate and speaking strongly and robustly to each other about council business. Um, but councillors must be ensure that when they do this they they still treat each other respectfully and that they don't bully and harass each other whilst doing so and obviously for the reasons set out in the report i believe that councillor fluker's conduct crossed the line and that he did behave in a manner that failed to treat councillors with respect and that amounted over the course of the entire period to bullying and harassment all right thanks for that clarification thank you Next one, please. Anyone else, Tara? Um, yes, Chairman, Councillor Hull, and then Councillor Mays wants to come back. Councillor Hull, please. Oh, thank you for letting me speak, Chairman. Um, I'm a new councillor, so it's all, you know, I was lucky enough to be elected. Um, I've been um, in business, thanks to Moulding District Council, for 36 years, and I, I was hope uh, I've tried to put something back. But like some of the, most of the other new councillors, we all run in businesses and times... Um, are, are quite precious to us. I'm also looking after my disabled father, or well, he was quite bad at the time. And um, when I, I feel it was the end of a meeting when this remark came, which it, it was not in you know context with. I think I feel that Councillor Fluker was trying to make the meeting more jovial for us and and trying to shorten it, and um, because he realised that you know it, it's a long meeting we have to be at. So he shouldn't have said it, but it was a mistake, and um, I hope it, that goes the way. Also, um, Councillor Siddle, Siddle, how long does he feel he's been bullied for? What was? Did he give any time? Thank you, Councillor Hull, uh, and congratulations on your election. Um, oh, you. The um, obviously in relation to the first point you made, um, I, I've set out in paragraph five point two three. Um, my thoughts on on whether um, such a comment is acceptable uh, if it's meant jovially. If it's meant as being part of, um, uh, I, I don't like the word banter, but I'm going to use it. Um, and I mean, in the first instance, uh, Councillor Fluker and Siddle clearly don't enjoy the type of relationship where um, people can take the mickey out of each other. Um, as you might have in a group of close friends, for instance. Um, and therefore, that automatically makes the, the, the behaviour in, inappropriate. Um, Councillor Siddle, in his complaint, which is found at Annex A of the report on page 43 of the Agenda Pack, sets out the period of time um, that he feels he was bullied and harassed by uh, Councillor Fluker. 
And the period in question is effectively from the time um, prior to his election um, to the, the time the complaint was made. Uh, there, were, there appears to have been incidents um, on a monthly basis almost where he feels that Councillor Fluker has acted in a manner that has been intended to undermine him or to humiliate him or bully or harass him. Oh, well, I've been in most of the meetings. Can you hear me OK? Um, yes. And yes. It, it, it hadn't come across or, or nothing had been said previous to that. So, I, you know, perhaps I'd missed out on something, but it, it didn't um, it didn't come across that way. Thank well, you. obviously, Councillor Hull, you, you know, you'll have your own, you'll have your opportunity after after this section. Yeah. You're going to have to consider whether the Code of Conduct has been breached. Um, obviously, I, I ask members to to largely focus on the content of my report when they're making those considerations. But obviously, one of the reasons why the Localism Act asks standards committees to consider these matters, or the, the council has decided the standards committee should consider this matter, is because many of you will know those involved. Many of you will have witnessed interactions yourself, um, and you'll have your own views on them uh, against what the type of culture you want to see within your authority. Has Councillor Fluter mm. acted in the way that you want your leader to act? Thank you. Yes, sir. Anybody else? Uh, Chairman, Councillor Mays is asked to come back. Councillor Mays. Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. No, um, uh, all points have been covered. Thank you very much. OK, thank you. I've got a number of points I want to raise and clarify. Uh, group meetings are private and confidential, so nothing in that group meetings can be relayed to anybody else, technically. Is that correct? That would be a matter for your own party, Councillor Helm. Um, yeah. We have our own rules, or, or we did have, because I'm not in the group anymore, we did have our own rules, so I feel anything that happened in group should not be repeated outside the group, and that's my view. Um, as for dress code, as you can see, jacket, tie, smart, this is what Councillor Fluker wants to portray in the meetings. A Conservative councillor is smart and, and properly dressed. So I think, and, and you also mentioned Councillor Fluker shouting from 20 yards. That's 60 feet. That's well outside the uh, member's room, which would be down the stairs. So I don't think that can be quite relevant unless he's got his measurements wrong. Um, and regard the hello sailor and all the rest of it um he did apologize at the next meeting he apologized to councillor siddle by email and it seems that uh, he changed his mind after speaking to councillor durham councillor durham has an issue with councillor fluker because he was leader of the council resigned but i can't go into the issues because they are confidential to the conservative party or Cuthbert group but i think i ought to set that in motion and let people consider that to whether that's relevant or not. Uh, okay. And I think I'll leave it at that. Well, I'm struggling to find the question in there, Councillor Helm. But, um, you know, the, the, the point I would make is that um, an apology from a councillor isn't relevant to whether the Code of Conduct has been breached okay. or not. It may, mitigate, it, may mitigate your, it may mitigate your sanction, but it yeah. seems to me if an apology has been offered, then it appears that the breach of the Code has already been accepted. OK, fine. Sorry for the uh, confusion. No Thank problem. You. Right. Uh, we move on now, I believe. Uh, the member concerned invited to make any representation. Have we got Councillor uh, Siddle here, please? Uh, Ch Chairman, I think that's a reference to the subject member, not the complainant. Yeah, OK, the subject member then. It's not uh, here, it's no. Not, okay. It's not present, Chairman. Uh, I, be I believe, Chairman, we should be moving down to um, point seven. Yes, the independent person invited to make any representation or advice. Yeah. Um, Chairman. Yes. Um, may I ask a couple of questions? I, uh, probably under item uh, stages five and six. Um, okay. May I ask a couple of questions of Councillor Siddall and also a factual question of the monitoring officer? Um, is that permitted, Simon, to uh, 
to ask Councillor Siddle that from this meeting? Uh, uh, you, that's up to you, Chairman. I'll permit it then. Uh, OK, um, I'll go ahead then. Um, my question to the monitoring office is one of fact, although I might have asked it differently if Councillor Fluker had been present. And that is, when do you recall when um, Councillor Fluker advised you and I think Mr Holmes that he had sent an email apology to Councillor Siddle? Um, that was, as you may be aware, Councillor Swain, I was overseas for three months. Um, uh, I only became aware of that apology when um, Miss Holmes, Mrs. Holmes, the deputy monitoring officer, had completed her report and then it was being brought to Joint Standards Committee and the issue was then raised whether that particular apology um, should be included in the bundle that was attached to the council's report, to, the, to my report. So that would have been just before January last year because the the, uh, the Standards Committee meeting dealing with that issue was the 30th of January, if my memory serves me right. So that would probably have been a few weeks, maybe a few weeks before, bearing in mind we've got to give five working days notice um, of the committee meeting, probably about two weeks before that I became aware of the issue relating to the apology, because obviously I'd only just come back from overseas at that point. Uh, you, you can't say how soon after the actual incident it took place then? No, but that will be covered by Miss Holmes' report, I'm sure, because she refers to it. I don't remember the details of her report, but that's in there. I know there is a reference to the apology in the text of her report. Yes, right, I, I understand. Um, can I uh, ask a couple of questions of uh, Councillor Siddle, please? Um, yes, I if it helps. Uh, firstly, Councillor Siddle, um, is or was uh, Councillor Fluker... Point of order, Mr Chairman. OK. What's the point of order? Um, uh, Councillor Siddle is not on, uh, is not part of this. He is a victim um, and, and should not actually have to answer questions in this. Um, and I don't think it is covered anywhere that he I'm, has to I'm, answer I'm questions. I'm quite happy to answer questions. I, I would uh, recommend that you don't. Okay, I'm, 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 I'm quite, yeah, obviously I've given my, uh, yeah, I'm happy to answer any questions. Is that all right with members? Carry on then, please. Agreed. Yes, that's fine. Thank you, Chairman. Um, the first question is, um, is um, Councillor Fluker in the habit of addressing colleagues by their surname? He, he is, yes, um, but not when he's standing outside the leader's door and I'm standing by the coffee machine in the members room with the members room door open and it being shouted probably from about 40 foot away at the top of his voice. Right, oh, thank you. The second one is um, in 432 you make reference, well, I think you make reference to the possibility that um, in the throne incident um, you make reference to Councillor, uh, the fact, the factual basis for the, the, um, uh, the, the comment that uh, you might be trying to displace him. Um, what is the factual basis for that? Um, uh, there, there is no factual basis, Councillor Swain. Uh, I just feel that part of the reason that I became under attack from Councillor Fluker is perhaps he saw some kind of threat in terms of my capabilities and background. Um, and that's perhaps where the reason why the undermining started right back at the selection in February 2019. Thank you very much. Is that it? We'll go back to the independent person, please. Thank you very much, Councillor Siddle. Thank you, Councillors. Sorry um, for the interruption. No problem, no problem. Um, I think you know, in my question, I asked about the um, whether Councillor Fluger um, had a duty to respond to the request. And I think that was duly answered. And I still think that 
possibly um, is somewhat of a, a breach. Um, and certainly it's not very polite, but I can understand that. Um, I think uh, there's lot, been a lot of questions asked. The, the report is very comprehensive. Um, and it seems to me there's a lot, there's quite a bit of information that it was was put in the report in relation to activities where councillor said uh, wasn't a councillor and then within the group meeting which i think you know councillors you have to try and ignore that um but it, overall it seems to me that um there is an element of bullying which might be it may be that um simply councillor fluka and 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 councillor siddle don't get on as, as as personalities which has already been said um but sitting here as the independent person as a member of the public it just looks to me like councillor siddle has been bullied um there was you know not making a comment about the sort of things like homophobic behavior or such like because um as i think it has already also been said councillors have to develop a bit, bit of a thick skin and that may be more difficult um in that situation but overall i would just like to comment and i think i'm going to finish there that uh, I believe Councillor Fluger has breached the code. Um, exactly where he breached it is probably pretty much in line with the uh, with the report. So thank you. Thank you for that. Any 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 questions of the independent person? Um, no, Chairman. No one's indicated. Right. Okay. We can move on to item eight now. Is that Tara? Uh, yes, Chairman. That's right. Yeah. The committee decides if there is a breach of the code of conduct. Um, do we want to do this in open session or closed session? It's up to you, members. Um, I believe uh, Councillor Nan wishes to make a proposal. Councillor Nan. Uh, yes, I, I do think we should uh, uh, definitely conduct this in open session, Chairman. Okay. Uh, and uh, I've got to the stage now, having read the report extensively and listened uh, today um, to make a proposition. Okay, what's your proposition then? Well, I agree with the independent person and uh, I agree with the report uh, yeah. and um, on that basis I think whatever the intention uh, was here, the cumulative effect uh, does amount to bullying and you know we need to be clear um, that it's the way that this is received by a party as well as the way that it's delivered. And I think this is in clear breach of our code of conduct, uh, particularly in relation to the leader of the council, as it was then. And I think it's very uh, disappointing that we haven't heard uh, Councillor Fluker's side of things and he hasn't been able to respond or he hasn't ch he's chosen not to respond. So my belief... Um, uh, Mr Chairman, is in relation to uh, the uh, covering sheet from the monitoring officer um, that uh, item C uh, under 3.2 has been arrived at. The Council of Fluka has failed to comply with the Member Code of Conduct and I so move. Okay, like uh, second. That, please. Councillor May seconded that. Can we take a vote, please? Could we have a recorded vote, please, Mr. Can Mr. Chairman? Can we have a recorded point vote, please? Point, yes. point of order, Mr. Chairman. Pardon? Point of, point of order. Still speaking. Point of order, please. Yes. Right. We had the training last week, and actually it was said in the training that um, a proposal can be put forward and second it, but it must be debated by the by the members before voting takes okay, place. Okay, then. OK, thank you very much for that, Norman. Very much, very much appreciate it. Um, we're going to move, we now move on to the debate on this. Who's going to open the debate, please? Councillor Nunn, would you like to start? Uh, well, I, I, I have um, uh, given my view there, Chairman, that I do think it's, um, that it's a cumulative effect and I do think it doesn't matter whether it was intended to be banter or not. Um, uh, it, it's the way that it's delivered, it's the way that it's received, it's the volume, it's the period of time, and uh, it's not acceptable, uh, particularly from somebody in a leadership position. 
Uh, and on that basis, I feel that the code has been breached. Okay, anybody else, please? May I speak again, Mr Chairman, please? Yes, Chairman, everybody. Councillor Mays has indicated she wishes to speak. Independent person, 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 and Councillor Mays. Right, thank you. Um, right, your code of conduct, uh, as I said earlier, 3.3 um, councillors must uphold the law. Now, if shouting hello station, sailor, left councillor civil feeling harassed, shaken or upset, it could be considered as a crime under Section 4A of the Public Order Act 1984. Now, because the comment was made in a public place, the public were present, um, it could be reasoned that, that it caused alarm or distress to people within sight or hearing range. This is a crime under Section 5 of the Public Order Act 1986. So I'm afraid there's two uh, acts which has uh, um, been um, gone against. So we have two. And, and the thing is, if this does go to court and there's a sentence, even suspended, and suspended means if you do anything wrong in that time, then this case comes back in again. If you uh, are committed, even suspended for more than 90 days, I think it's the Localism Act or it could be the um, Representative of the People Act, um, you, are, you immediately stop being a councillor of any type of any council and that goes in for five years. So you cannot take part in any um, election for five years, which means the next election is 2003, I believe, because it's still within five years it will go into the, the one of 2007, which means the next election that person can take part in is 2014, I believe. Now, even if you change the name, there was a case a few weeks ago, uh, a councillor who was convicted, he changed his name and tried to stand again. And uh, I think he got put back in jail again. So uh, as far as I'm concerned, crimes were committed, which is a breach of your code of conduct, number three, which you must, 3.3, which says you must uphold the law. Thank you. OK, any other members, please? Councillor Mays, was it? Uh, yeah, thank you, Mr Chairman. Um, yeah, I um, am actually in agreement with Councillor Stilts. Um, I believe that, um, that Councillor Fluka has also breached 3.5 of our Code of Conduct, little a, breach, uh, through breach of the Equality Act for the homophobic remarks he made in the Chamber, as well as the Public Order Act Section 5. Furthermore, I would also consider, and I think we should consider, uh, 3.7 uh, little a, uh, which says that uh, uh, is about uh, his position, and I think he has used his position as leader to convert, confer an advantage over another member by shutting them down, talking over them, and uh, intimidating and bullying them. And I think we really should also consider that uh, breach as well as 3.2, uh, 3.5B and 3.5E, uh, all of which have already been covered in the report um, submitted. Thank you, Mr Chairman. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes, please. Yes, Councillor Siddle. Um, Swain, isn't it? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Got my names in the middle of that. I'm very sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I just want to say that um, uh, I was at the council meeting in question, but um, I was uh, not cited because of my position in the chamber. And the um, um, suggestion that um, any gesture was aimed at the administration seems to me um, improbable, since they were even worse cited than me, sitting parallel on the other side of the chairman. Um, and I was at the JASC meeting on the 30th of January, but only as an observer. So what I'm, I'm in, not privy to all the other goings on as are reported on, and I'm entirely going by the, the report. Um, I would start with looking at 5.14 um, and this question about, um, what should we say, peripheral events, um, uh, which have um, uh, been trawled by the investigator. Uh, in order to get, uh, establish a, a pattern of behaviour and a general attitude. Um, uh, but um, he, there's a question of whether we have to take all of those into account. I think we have to be careful that we concentrate on um, 
uh, factual matters as far as we can um, and um, not pay over much attention to what our um, impressions or views of what took place. Um, uh, we we're referring back to that previous point. Whether there was a breach of the law is not really for the um, JSC to determine. That's outside our jurisdiction, but only whether the code of conduct has been, as the expression goes, caught. Um, in 5.3, um, the, the references to the Localism Act and its, its, its relevance are a little bit, um, well, they're not very helpful because I think we have this question of um, the actions of Councillor Fluker um, being either narrowly interpreted as what happens within the council itself, in other words, or between the uh, between Councillor Fluker and officers, um, and the broader question of um, how far we um, go in uh, accepting and uh, taking into account um, actions that were outside it. Um, and I don't think the cases that the that Mr. Horan mentions really have too much bearing on it. Um, they make the contrast between councillor actually conducting the business of the council um, <coughs> in a strict sense and councillors as individuals. I think here we're dealing with something in between, which is admitted in the report is a rather grey area. But to my mind, um, what um, what goes on at the Conservative group meetings is of relevance because the, um, the, um, the incidents only take place because Councillor Fluker um, was leader and member of the council and because the actions were taken, um, the decisions at the meetings were very much, um, which we say, prejudicial to the council meeting itself and they're very relevant to um, what happened at the meetings. Um, I, uh, I accept the general conclusions of the report that it was a consistent pattern of behaviour um, of hum, hum, uh, humiliation and mocking, harassing, um, and, and a certain meanness in the his talk of um, the sex, sexuality to officers, which comes back to um, intentions, we say, and also to uh, uh, whether there's a breaches of confidence. I don't believe, um, at least I find the explanations given and were given at the JSC meeting on Thursday of January as believable. Um, I'm not a yachting person, so I don't know whether yachtsmen greet each other by saying hello sailor. But I do know as a, should say, an outsider and member of the public um, how they would um, interpret it and how they would see the, um, the statement. And so the actions um, uh, in the meeting are reproachable in the public eyes, intimidation over voting and predetermination of voting, which I think um, um, uh, members of the public might, might find particularly exceptional um, and rather reduces the um, the importance or significance of the meetings themselves. Um, I'd note the lack of cooperation with investigators. Um, I think that is relevant. Um, and I'm particularly concerned about the incident referred to under 429 and 430 about an officer really not wanting to be involved when it was merely a question of confirming a matter of fact. <coughs> to my mind, this does have a, a bearing on it because it does seem to indicate a sort of overbearing influence on the Councillor Fluker, on, on officers as well as other members. So I think I can see breaches, um, the number of them being mentioned, 3.2, 3.5b and 3.5e of the code, but I also agree, I think, what has been said about breach of 3.4 and non-cooperation. Um, and 3.6, I think, about disclosing confidential information. Um, the code of conduct includes do do's as well as don'ts. Um, and the, the seven points, which are reflections of the Localism Act concerning honesty and leadership, <coughs> Um, I, and they are also incorporated in the Code of Conduct, um, uh, have been uh, contravened themselves. Um, we obviously have two stages now. One is to determine that 
breaches have been made of the code of conduct. Um, before we go on, I think, to the next one, considering what we do about it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else want to debate oh, this? Chairman, uh, Mr. Quelch wishes to come back. Mr. Quelch, please. Um, yes, Chairman, thanks very much. Um, you already have a motion on the table uh, by Councillor Nunn, seconded by Councillor Mays. Um, now, in the debate, uh, quite a few other parts of the code have been cited. Um, and of course, that's legitimate. That's all part of the debate. But um, two points to make, first of all, is I think Councillor Nunn will need to be very clear in his proposal. What part of the code I is he saying um, is breached based on his proposal? And the second point is obviously um, members need to bear in mind the nature of the complaint that was made and the investigation into that complaint that was made. Members aren't bound by the conclusion of the investigator, but they need to obviously take that very much into account. And if you go to page 42 of uh, Mr. Oram's report, he himself says um, that um, uh, paragraph 6.1, appendix one, um, our finding is that his conduct council failed to comply with paragraph 3.2, which is you must treat others with respect. Paragraph 3.5b, uh, which is you must not bully any person. And paragraph 3.5e, conduct yourself in a manner which could reasonably be regarded as bringing your office or the authority into disrepute. Now, I know that in the debate, members have mentioned other parts of the code. And of course, that, that, that to some extent is legitimate, but members must be sure that they have evidence um, and you, your main piece of evidence is the investigator's report. Uh, you also need to take account of the, what the independent person has said as well in relation to the code, as well as your own debate. So members need to be very clear that they have evidence on the balance of probabilities uh, that each part of the code that they say has been breached has indeed been breached. So my, my advice, Chairman, to you is that Councillor Nunn needs to be very clear in his proposition which part of the code he says is breached and, and, and whether that is seconded by Councillor Mays. I know she has already seconded his proposition, but... Um, I don't think code mentioned parts of the code were mentioned in that proposal. Councillor Nunn, would you like to? Uh... Yes, well, thank you very much, Chairman, and thank you, uh, Mr. Welch. Let me be clear then. Um, on, on the basis of what we've heard, uh, I believe that the code of conduct has been breached at 3.2 uh, in relation to um, uh, bullying. And uh, um, and three, uh, with that, with in relation to not showing respect, and in relation to three point five in terms of bullying. So that's my proposal. Okay, that's three point five B and E, or just B. Uh, both. 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 Okay. <laughs> Have we got a seconder for that? Um, I'd like to amend, uh, add an amendment to that uh, proposal. Okay. What's so we, uh, Chairman, sorry to intervene, but we're you, you can't um, amend a proposal. The, the proposal is seconded or yeah, not. You're correct, yeah. Um, yes, sorry can about I, that. Uh, oh, I can I ask uh, Councillor Nunn, did he say he was going to include 3.7? Because I, I don't see that that applies. No, he's, he's oh, done 3.5b and 3.5e. Is that correct, Councillor Nunn? Yes, I mean, my main contention here is that because of the behaviour, Councillor Siddle um, has, um, has been uh, uh, shown no respect uh, in terms of the code of conduct and has been bullied. So, you know, whether, whether Mr Quelch feels I should quote chapter and verse or not, in terms of the code of conduct, it's 3.2 and 3.5. And three point oh three point five B and three point five E. Yes, that's right. Simon. Is that correct? Yeah, I mean, I think I think Councillor Nunn's been very clear, actually, his proposition. He's, he is saying 3.2, 3.5b and 3.5e. I think that's correct. So his proposition is based on a breach of the code of those three parts. 
Okay. Um, which, which is in line with the actual investigator's conclusion as well. Yes. Yeah. I'm happy to second that. Um, okay. Yeah. Right. So the uh, the vote is on. Uh, Councillor Fluker failed to comply with paragraph 3.2, 3.5b, and 3.5e of the Council's Code of Conduct. Can you take a recorded vote, please, Tara? Uh, yes, Chairman. Members, um, if when I call your name, you could just indicate uh, for, against, or abstaining, please. Starting with Councillor Bassinger. For. You, Councillor Helm. Abstain. Thank you. Councillor Hull. Against. Thank you. Councillor Mays. Councillor Mays. For. Thank you very much. Councillor Morley. Against. Against. Was that against, Councillor Morley? Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Nunn. Four. And Councillor Swain. Four. Thank you. The results of that, Chairman, is four, four, two against and one abstention. Thank you. OK, the, so that is duly carried that Councillor Fluker has broke the Code of Conduct. Is there any more to add to that before I uh, close the meeting or not? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman, we need oh, we to, to um, the, agree on sanctions. Yeah. Yes, we've got to do the. Um... So, what sanctions or what we're going to do about this, members? Um, Chairman, is it possible to make an additional proposal or discussion? Um, Simon, can we make an additional proposal or not? It, it depends what the proposal is. I mean, uh, tell me what the proposal is first. Then. The, the committee has already decided that there has been has already made a decision on what the breach of the code is. So um, there was an opportunity for that to have been amended after being seconded. Um, but a decision has now been made, Chairman, on that. Really, the next stage Thank is you. sanctions, if any. Sanctions. OK. Right, members, do you want to impose any sanctions? Councillor Nunn? Yes. Councillor Swine. Councillor Swine. You haven't got anything to add on, Councillor Swine. Uh, yes, thank you. Um, looking at the possible range of sanctions, some of them seem very um, um, weak and un un ineffective in relation to this particular set of breaches. Um, and since most of it, most of the report centres on Councillor Fluker's approach to other people and his attitudes. Um, to, de to dealing with other people, in other words, interpersonal contact. Um, I want to suggest that um, he should not serve on certain of the committees where um, dealing with um, personal conduct is concerned, notably the committees and panels on uh, that is in 2.2, the appointments board, the appointments committee, the investigating disciplinary panel, um, uh, it, it seems he would not be an appropriate person in the light of the report to, to serve on those committees. Simon, can you qualify whether Councillor Fluke has resigned from all these committees and outside working groups? My understanding is that he has, chairman, uh, chairman. So he's already resigned from all these outside working groups and all the rest of it? What else would you like to do, Councillor? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, could I come back? Could I speak, please? Yes, you may. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yeah, um, if you look at the um, sanctions um, that are on page 12, uh, at 3. Yes, I've got them in front of me. Yes. Um, obviously, I think, I think what um, would be uh, helpful is if, if we looked at those to actually decide um, where we go from here and in line with what Councillor Swain's just said um, I certainly would recommend to the council full council that the member is removed from any official position removal from any committee or from any working group 
Um, I, I certainly support that. I would also support recommending to council that a member is issued with a formal censure um, as um, th this, is, this is quite a serious um, situation that uh, we find ourselves in um, going forward. Okay. Any other comments? Uh, Mr. Chairman. Councillor Nunn wishes to speak. Yes. And uh, Councillor Still. Can I take the independent person first, please? Right, thank you. You can hear me, can you? Yes, I can hear you. Oh, right, great. So I'm not used to this one. Um, because of the previous outcome, or the outcome of the previous meeting, I believe, yes, we should actually do the um, formal and essential reprimand which is posted on the website. The public need to see that this case has been dealt with because previously they were left very much um, unhappy with it. So I think we need to show the public for transparency that he has been reprimanded and it's put on the website. He has already had the training, uh, I believe that was said in the last hearing on it. So uh, uh, I agree, but I do very much feel that we must put it on the website if nothing else. Councillor Nunn, Councillor Nunn. Yes, thank you very much, Chairman. Well, given the, given the clarification that we've had from um, uh, Simon uh, Quelch earlier on, uh, I believe at two on page 12 uh, that we are able as a JSC to issue um, a formal censure anyway from this committee. And I would propose that we do that as a first point. Secondly, I believe that we should then refer this to full council for a written um, censure. And uh, thirdly, uh, I agree with Councillor Swain um, that despite the resignations from the committees and working groups now, um, that doesn't stop appointments to committees and working groups in the future. So I think we should be doing something under five uh, as far as that's concerned as well. OK, anybody else? Uh, Chairman, Mr Quelch, would you speak? Mr Quelch, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, in relation to the censure, there's a difference between a censure by standards committee and a formal censure. Um, I know this perhaps sounds a bit a, a little bit complicated, but under the constitution, um, JSC can impose their own informal resolution on the matter once they found a breach, and that would be that that can include a censure, as I've as I've explained. That would be. The committee themselves saying we censure you and that's signed by the chairman of the standards committee um uh, you, you can't i don't think you could actually give a censure from standards committee and then recommend a formal censure by the council um it, it's really one or the other because if if the committee itself gives a censure that's that's an informal resolution of, of the matter. If the committee decides to recommend the more serious one, a formal censure, then that's obviously a decision of council. Um, you can't do both. In relation to, um, my advice in relation to committee meetings is that uh, Councillor Fluker, as I understand it, is still on the district planning committee and he is still on the area planning committee. Now, members can recommend removal from that to council if they wish. Obviously, they can't remove Councillor Fluker from council because he's been elected by the people. He's a councillor, so you can't remove from that. All other, as I understand it, appointments, uh, personal working groups and committees, he has resigned from. Now, I don't think it's for... I don't believe in that recommendation. Members have the power to recommend to council that for the future, um, uh, uh, Councillor Fluker should not sit. That would then be a decision for council itself at the next annual meeting, who to put on which committees. And council will know, therefore, of the decision of this committee that there has already been a finding of a breach of the code, if you see what I mean. Yes. Right, members, where do you I, want to go? Can with I this? come back to that, please, Chair? Yes, Councillor Nunn. Was that Councillor Nunn? I find, I find that advice strange, to be honest with you, because uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with Joint Standards Committee 
writing to Councillor Fluker to inform him of our displeasure uh, in relation to the outcome and telling him that we are recommending a, a formal uh, uh, sanction to full council. So we could do both. Agreed. And, and secondly, um, even in employment circles, a warning has a life. And if we're saying under recommendation five about removal from committees and working groups, um, that we don't, that doesn't apply because he's not on any. Um, uh, what's to stop at the annual meeting, which is not that long off, Councillor Fluke are being appointed to those groups of working, uh, those working groups and committees. Um, I would say um, for the for the period of twelve months. Okay, is, that can be seconded. Can I would it? agree with that. Okay, I is would that agree. Do you just permit me to, to, to Simon? Yeah, just, just I, I think I probably misunderstood Councillor Nunn. If if Councillor Nunn's um, uh, proposing uh, that there is that Councillor Fluker is informed that JSC is recommending formal censure, then I agree that is legitimate. Yes. I have misunderstood Councillor Nunn. I thought he was proposing that there was a censure from JSC and also a recommendation of a formal censure to Council. But as I understand it, he's simply if I've understood correctly, he is actually only suggesting or proposing uh, informing Councillor Fluker the, uh, of the recommendation for a formal sentence, in which case that, that's quite legitimate. OK. I am chairman, uh, but in so doing, we've informed him that we are, um, by majority, um, believe that he has breached the code. Is that all right, Simon? Is that a proposal? Do we have? To yeah, have yes, that that, that is acceptable. And I'm sorry, I misunderstood, uh, Councillor Nunn. That 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 is acceptable. Okay, so uh, Councillor Nunn, what your proposal was? So my proposal, then, Chairman, is that um, with a carefully worded letter um, uh, produced uh, in association with the monetary officer and the independent person. Um, we write to Councillor Fluka to tell him of the outcome uh, of today's uh, hearing uh, and uh, regret that he wasn't uh, present and that he didn't cooperate with the investigation, but that the committee by majority uh, has found uh, against him and will be recommending to full council a formal censure. Uh, in addition, this uh, committee will be recommending that he is not permitted to serve on committees or working groups for the next 12 months. I'll second that. Does that include the two planning committees he's still on or not? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay, right. Um, someone wanted to say something? Nobody? Um, yes, um, Chairman. Um, I, I particularly mentioned the, the groups that he was um, in, involving um, dealing with people, should we say. Um, I'm a bit hesitant about, um, should we say, uh, uh, depriving his, the South Minister of half of their representation on the Council for other policy matters, um, because this is essentially about personal, personal attitudes and so on, rather than... Um, efficiency or proficiency in conducting um, council affairs. He should have thought about that though, Councillor Swain, before he made these actions. My seconded proposal stands, Chairman. Okay, Tara, can we take the vote, please? Do you want the recorded vote? Yes, please. Yes. Tara. Uh, yes, Chairman. Uh, members, um, if you can again um, just indicate if you're for, against or abstaining when I call your name, please. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Massinger. For, oh, please, Tara. Thank you. Councillor Helm. Abstain. Councillor Hull. I, I lost my internet, so I can't. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Mays. For. Thank you. Councillor Morley. Four. 
Thank you, Councillor Nunn. Four. Thank you, Councillor Swain. Four. The results of that chairman is five, four and one abstention. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, is there any other things we have to discuss, Tara? Uh, no, Chairman, there are no other items of business as far as I'm aware of them. OK, I have no other items of business at this moment and I duly close the meeting. Thank you very much, members. Thank you, Mr Chairman. You put up with me all right because it's thrust on me straight away and I didn't know what I was doing for a start. I had no preparation or anything. Not a grand job.